There we go. Welcome back. Hey, as I was just physically preparing for the stream, uh, two things dawned on me. Originally, what I had planned to do was to do some sort of instructive stream explaining what it's like to debug a program, uh, how you use your development tools to figure out what's causing a problem, and um, just do that in a rather instructive manner, showing off the abilities of the tools and the proper testing routines and um, how you can go about just gradually discovering more and more about a problem until it's been fixed. Um, however, uh, it occurred to me as I was preparing that I ended up making a code change yesterday which causes this pretty easy to reproduce a segmentation fault. Um, and I'm pretty sure that that code change is what's responsible, so it's not going to be anywhere near as instructive as I'd hoped uh, this session would be, because I kind of know what the problem is. At least I think I do. Not entirely sure. Um, and the second realization I made was that today, in fact, is not Sunday. Um, it's a holiday, but it's not a uh, day of the weekend. Well, depends how you define your weekends, but anyway, let's get going. Um, so what's this regarding? This is, you see, I've created a file test.txt. Um, this shows a series of instructions to be fed into a program. In this case, Stockfish is the um, going to be a recipient of these instructions. Um, in order for Stockfish to be able to read this, it needs to come from standard in, so I take the file, append standard in to it, which is just the keyboard, uh, so you can be typing commands after the file's been read. Um, and Stockfish takes this input and very quickly um, recognizes that there's some kind of problem. Um, at least in the States, today is Labor Day. Um, so. It's a celebration of uh, the labor movement in, in the States. Um, so I'm going to focus on this programming thing here. Um, in particular, let me see, can I get a new tab open and see if we can get GitHub up and over here. Let's see. Uh, Looks like I've got to put this in the address bar. There we go. So I can show what I was changing yesterday, if I can remember. I know I can click on the commit history and it'll show you, hey look, here's all the great things you changed. And I know it was one of these two things where I ended up changing what I thought was a typo. Um, and even though I'd been testing, I didn't think that um, anything would be causing a segmentation fault or something of that nature here. Yes, it's not, uh, I think it's the previous commit where I had introduced the defect. So that's not that commit. How about this one? Um, I think this is the one or I changed what I thought was a typo. Oh, come on, where is it? Is this going to make a liar out of me? Yeah, yeah, this is the thing. So, view this file, position.cpp. Uh, okay, well, apparently... Oh, that's not what I wanted. That's too much information. Um, really, I wanted the comparison I had with the previous revision, um, but I was kind of hoping for an inline view of all the, wait, this shows the file just as it is. All right. So I guess to get the diff, I have to, I don't know. 
Okay, I mean, here's the diff, but I wanted more context, so what I should have done instead of trying to navigate my way around is expand this. And look at that, that beautiful CSS styling. Hang on one second, close your eyes. Uh, I'm going to turn off the dark theme. All right. Hope you're not blind. Um, if you are, well, I told you to close your eyes, and you didn't do it. Anyway, so all these changes are in position.cpp. Um, I think, where was it? Somewhere around here. Yeah, this change. Where I was checking if is horde and we don't have a king, um, then return false. Otherwise, keep doing this validation routine. While I was in here fixing the defect that we were having for Horde uh, chess variant, um, I got rid of that comparison because it makes no sense. Because we, currently Stockfish does not play this hybrid variant where it's both Atomic and Horde. That would be a horrible variant. Nobody would want to play that. Um, so I took away this part of the condition in that conditional um, so, or I took away the first part, um, so now we just check, do we have no king? Uh, and if so, return false. But, um, I, I mean, I've been running this on my instance for some time. I've been running tons of tests. I've been having difficulties getting my instance deployed, frankly, and I didn't think anything would come up this, um, well, I don't know. At any rate, I've been trying to do my best and due diligence with testing as I've been just completely exhausted due to other reasons. And um, I just did not get around to testing this change, apparently. So this is line 870 in position.cpp, where I got rid of that condition. If I could remember the function name, that would be excellent. If not, we're going to have to keep expanding this until we can finally... See. Okay, this is called gives check. Um, and I don't know if this logic makes sense or not. If our opponent has no king, we can't give check. But I don't know if that's actually correct. I mean, it makes sense in a way, but just because something logically makes sense doesn't mean it's automatically correct. Um... So, and I'm not sure that this even matters, but I'm thinking that this is somehow indirectly causes something that causes something that causes something that's a problem. Um, yeah, Stockfish code tends to be both optimized, um, just making the use of the compiler, which can do a lot of things for you really intelligently, uh, but also it's quite human readable. And I was just shocked when I made that discovery uh, initially was starting to do some development with this engine. They actually do a really good job commenting their code, formatting their code, and just making it simple enough that people can read it. Um, so I'm going to close this. Remember position.cpp.line870. It might have moved around a bit since then. I don't think so, though. So this is where it used to read if, is, or, etc. I'm putting this back. Uh, uh, we're going to recompile that and rerun the test. And if the test succeeds, then that means that that was the cause of the problem. If not, okay. So my theory was in fact wrong. Um, that this is not the cause of the problem. Um, which means we have a far more challenging and perhaps more interesting problem on our hands anyway. Okay, that's kind of a, in some ways that's a relief because it just means we're not gonna end this right away. In other respects, it means that we got a problem, Houston. Um, okay. So I'll show you what else I did. 
So you remember, here are my test steps. Um, I think this can actually be simplified a bit. We don't technically need to feed all that to the engine, I don't think. And I don't think we need those two is ready commands. All those, do, those don't hurt. And those actually, well, let's see. If we can do without it, let's do without it. So if I can get rid of those two is ready commands and just keep this as simple as possible, and if this duplicates the problem. Um, yeah, and that's good in a way. If I can get rid of that and. Okay, so we've duplicated the problem with three lines of input. I think that's probably the simplest that we're going to get with duplicating this. Um, so then we break out our other tool, the GNU debugger, GDB, and run it with our program. We type run to say we're going to start the program. Um, you can put additional arguments to start the program with additional arguments, but we're not doing that. And then we're going to just copy and paste all that input and we can ask for what happened at the time that we had the problem. So here it's saying at line 1430 um, something terrible happened. In fact a uh, segmentation fault occurred. Basically meaning the program's trying to read memory that does not belong to the program. Um, so this is where things get kind of messy, not going to lie. Um, so one thing you can do is look at every one of these source code files where it says to look at it. So we here have like position.cpp 1430, 1430, search.cpp 1632, uh, 1235, and it'll tell you like this is where you started the program, uh, these are all the this is where the last thing that happened happened uh, and this is what that last thing was, was the segmentation fault. Um, and it even gives you the names of all the functions that got called. For example, uh, clone called start thread called something we don't know what, called idle loop called search called search called search called search called search search Q search and then QSearch called key after. And then key after with this input of move equals move null. Um, and this equals this. Uh, actually, move equals entry uh, move null unknown 1826. I'm not exactly sure how to read all of that. But this gives you some idea of what kinds of things were being passed into what kinds of functions in what classes in which source files. This that tends to be pretty informative. Uh, as to whether a person can read it or not, <laughs> depends on the person, depends on the code, of course. Um, so. Next thing I need to do here, well, in fact, this is what I did before starting up the stream. I looked at this file. Just looked at what's the last thing that happened. Position.cpp line 1430 is this. Where key um, gets modified by the value that's in this table called Zobris PSQ. Um, and it gets modified. So this is basically defining a hash key of a position. And each time a blast removes a piece from the board, we look that, uh, look up the square that's in that blast. Um, and if there's a piece there, we modify our key accordingly. Um, I don't actually know what the value is that's causing this to fail. So I'm going to add some logging. Uh, let's see, what do I want to log? Um, well, ideally the piece, right? I'm just going to, if I remember right, square and piece and all that can be represented as integers. Uh, 
so we're going to give that a try. This is going to print out tons and tons and tons of logging. But this is going to tell us what square we were trying to read from, as well as what piece um, we were trying to use. Um, so let's recompile. Oh, I'm sorry, before I go further running that, I should check out the one thing before that, which was search at CPP, see exactly what we're using key after for, and maybe we don't even need to be using it. So, this does a speculative prefetch in the hash table. Well, in order to do that, I guess it needs to know what key to prefetch. And I don't know if the circumstance under which the code is called, um, it makes sense for a prefetch to occur or not. Uh, we can always start exploring that route of do we actually need to be calling this code in the first place? Um, but bef and I mean, ideally you'd want to have that whole context, but trying to reconstruct all that's kind of messy here. Uh, we can see from the program output that it searched one move deep, two moves deep, three moves deep, and then a segmentation fault occurred, presumably as it was trying to go four moves deep. Um, we were limiting our search to uh, four tenths of a second and eight moves deep. And um, in going eight moves deep, something bad happened. Um, actually, that's the other thing I can experiment with. Um, hang on. I should have thought about this. Let's see, what line do we want to go? 14th? Yeah, let me put that back and recompile this without that line of code. Um, I wonder, what if I limit the search to just four moves deep? Do we still see the problem? Um, yeah, this is something I have control over. I don't have so much control over what's the state of the program when it failed, but I do have control over the state of the input that I, or rather the input characters I'm feeding to the program. Okay, so if I limit it to uh, depth four, um, then that does still exhibit the problem. If I limit it to depth three, our problem does not occur. So we know that it's at depth four that the problem happens. Um, so given that there are 20 possible first moves, about 20 possible second half moves, about 20 possible third half moves, etc., cetera, um, we can know something about, well, we have some idea of what the state of the program is, but not very much because um, that gives us about, I don't know, if I'm doing the math right, 20 times 20 times 20 it's about 8,000 possible positions that we could be in at that point. Which is why I'm not really putting a whole lot of effort into trying to, um, uh, what was it? I'm not putting a whole lot of effort into trying to understand the entire state of um, the position that we're in. Because I don't really have a good way to discover that. Let me just try to discover what actually writing code to discover what kind of state the program's in is a time-consuming effort. So I want to try to discover as much as I can writing as little code to do the discovery as necessary. Um, uh, so that's what I'm doing. I'm adding a little bit of code that prints out some more information. So Here's our more information, five and some ridiculous, ridiculous number. Um, that's probably the problem right there, but where does that number come from? So, BPC. Uh, now, is there some way I can check, is a square occupied? It could just be, perhaps, that that 
uh, square wasn't properly initialized. I don't know. Um, let's see, key after the move. So I think we've already executed the move at this point, or at least we're in the process of performing the execution. Um, we're on line 1430 of search.cpp. Actually, since I don't have a good way to look in the history, at least I don't know how to perform a comparison across revisions using command line, I'm going to bring up GitHub again. Um, so shield your eyes. We're going to go back to a brighter screen. Um, we're going to go look at source position.cpp. Um, okay, what was the line number again? This was 1430 something. 1430, it was the line number. Um, oh, wow, I can't perform text search on the line numbers. That's kind of unfortunate. And I forgot what code I was searching for, but it's somewhere around here. Um, yeah, key after. Uh, I want to compare that to previous versions of this file. So history, um, there, let's check out this, or in fact, let's take a look at this change. Actually, that was an upstream change. That's not going to be what we're needing. This is the thing I should be looking at. This is the things I had to change in addition to uh, the upstream changes. So Stockfish, uh, the team decided to change some of the parts of the program that just said this is how you represent a position. Um, so I had to make some code changes to implement that. Uh, for what I was doing. And I think most of this... Oh, does this also include their changes? I didn't think it would. Apparently it does. Um, hmm. Well, that actually makes it more difficult for me to figure out what changed. Um, yeah, that's kind of a bummer. Um, so we need to look for, uh, I was going to say line 1430-ish, where there's that method key after. Yeah, that's the thing we're looking for. Type of piece, type of piece. Uh, Oh, this says take the color that's not us and take that piece type. Um, hmm. So we were able to discover what kind of piece is on the square. Take the color that's not us, take that piece type and remove it. Um, I don't have a good feeling about that. I certainly made the code simpler, but it's probably wrong. Um, but yeah, the function to check what's the type of the piece on that square is just type of. I think that function still exists. I'm taking the Stockfish uh, chess engine, which also plays atomic chess, and figuring out why it's segmentation faults when it's playing from the initial position. The code's already written. At this point, I'm trying to figure out how do I fix the bugs. Um, so I'm looking at previous revisions of these files and figuring out something changed. In this case, I think the key thing that changed was that we're no longer checking what's the type of the piece uh, that we captured. 
when we performed an atomic explosion and captured multiple pieces. Yeah. Um, well, you can see up there in the address bar, this is just GitHub, uh, my username, and then Stockfish. And that's where it's located. Uh, Stockfish 7, I think, is it qualified for, or is qualifying for, the final round of the top computer chess engine competition. Um, so I think it's among the world's top four, if not better than that. Uh, it's really strong. It's free, open source. Um, they aren't interested in any of the changes that I made to make it play all these special types of chess. They don't care about that. They're more interested in pursuing the number one position. And I can't exactly blame them for that. Um, but yeah, I like having an engine that can play these variants uh, and just discover interesting things about them. But yeah, I think the key discovery here is that I'm not checking what type of piece was captured. Um, so... I'm able to see what are all the squares upon which uh, the explosion occurred, um, or the blast from the explosion hit, um, and I'm no longer doing that. Maybe if I do that, then I can learn more about what kinds of uh, keys I should be indexing into the hash table. Although I think the problem was that this this is returning the uh, square that didn't make any sense either. So that's going to be fun too. Um, there I think are hundreds of front ends for Stockfish. You can really just choose one. They, Stockfish supports the universal chess interface. So pretty much every chess interface that's out there that supports an engine will support Stockfish. Um, I just mostly do it through the command line because it's easier for me to debug it that way. Um, it might, well, so this is, I mean, that's a theory. What do you have to support your theory? Um, really, at this point, I'm trying to collect more information about what changed in the code and collect more information about um, what output the program's providing at the time of the problem. So, we get the segmentation fault because we're trying to access something at memory location 5 comma 12 million or 129 million or whatever that number is. And I don't think my computer has that many spaces available in memory. Uh, so I'm probably doing the indexing incorrectly. Oh wait, hang on, where's my line number? So. Yeah, so this BPC, this type of piece, is probably wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong, I'm just saying that uh, we don't know enough at this point to jump to that conclusion. It's easy to make theories and people pride themselves on that. Um, I know some people at work who are pretty happy to say, oh, I've got a theory and have absolutely nothing to support it. Can't even explain their theory, but they're proud that they came up with it. And that's great. Um, but yeah, it's um, theories are useful. Uh, keep in mind that this error occurs uh, from the start position on half move four. So unless it's possible on half move four that a player has already lost their king, uh, that theory doesn't hold water. Um, So I think this might be our problem here, is that, um, wait, what? Here, let me switch this around, because it's driving me mad. Um, so, Okay, so that's the problem. It's not that we're accessing 5 
comma that number, but that number comma five. Uh, so I think the problem is that here where I'm checking, um, where I'm trying to index into this key hash, uh, I'm doing it completely wrong. Um, or could be that just, wait, what should I be storing into this um, blast thing in the first place? Um, that was the other thing I wanted to check out. I think position.cpp is where the moves are implemented. Um, and I want to search for where are we doing an assignment into Blast. So, board Blast indicates all the bits where an explosion occurred. Um, state Blast equals piece on that square. But is this piece on necessary anymore? How do we usually do that kind of assignment, I wonder? Uh, for example, I'll show you the data structure. So inside of a game state, we have a captured piece. And I kind of copied that um, and came up with my own data structure for 64 squares each of which could contain a piece that might have been captured. Um, in practice, the way that's implemented is I just copy the whole position, I think, or just copy the position with regard to where the capture occurred and the squares immediately surrounding it. Um, so it'll have eight or nine pieces inside this blast. Um, I think that's how I implemented it anyway. Um, so if I say blast or captured piece, uh, can I do it this way too? Yeah. I don't like the fact that's highlighting some of the text, but whatever. Oh wait, no, it's actually highlighting the complete match, not the, um, not these group number one in the expression. So that's good. Um, yeah, in fact, if I want to narrow this further, here, just so we get just the matches we're interested in. Uh, so we see this is how we normally would assign a captured piece state captured piece equals captured um, so I should take a look at where the code does this make sure I'm doing something similar in terms of data types oh, can I not select text here okay it's just my mouse there we go um, make sure I'm doing something similar uh, for when we're capturing pieces um, using uh, explosions. Okay, so where is captured getting assigned to something? Captured equals piece underscore on and then provide the name of the square. Okay, so I'm actually following that convention. Am I not? Maybe I'm not. Um... Hmm. Uh, I've got a bad feeling about that. So. Piece on two. I think takes, yeah, okay, that takes the current representation of the board, indexes using square two. Um. Uh, piece on from and piece oh the move has not yet been executed we know that because there's a piece on the from square and there's a piece on the to square 
Um, in fact, yeah, this is where we're calculating. These are all the squares that are king's throw away from the capture square. Um, excluding the piece which is performing the capture because we're not removing that one. That one will get removed. Not sure why. I forget why I coded it that way. Uh, oh, right, because that piece gets uh, removed from the from square anyhow. Um, I couldn't have made this more confusing. Okay, so, I mean, this function will, even without all this atomic stuff, it'll say we're removing the piece from the to, from the destination square, removing the piece from the origin square, and we're going to add our piece from the origin square, just PC. We're going to be adding that onto our destination. Um, and did we always do that? I forget. Sorry for that. Um, I forget. As long as we're consistent, I suppose it doesn't matter too much. Um, yeah, I'm not liking this. I'm not liking where this is going, because where this is going is saying that... Um, I should have returned a value up here and not allowed us to do what we normally do. Um, namely, I should probably do something to this effect way up here. Um, Not sure why I didn't do that to begin with. Anyhow, that's, I mean, that's not great that I forgot about that. In fact, that would have to go uh, inside this loop, for, which only applies to atomic chess positions. Um, so it's possible I had some wrong keys going into the hash table. Which is really not good. Um. <laughs> yeah. Well, the funny thing is, I I stream from a Windows PC. There's really not great support for streaming from Linux. Uh, and so, in order to achieve that, I mean, usually I've got this full screen. It doesn't matter. I usually don't have other browser tabs open. Um, but the easiest way for me to SSH into my Linux box. And I mean, okay, yeah, you should be using an IDE, whatever. Um, okay. Well, your experience with OBS is probably more positive than mine. I should really give OBS Studio another chance. I mean, I spent hours with the thing and struggled with it, but anyway um, yeah so I was saying that I was missing this line of code which means possibly that my hash keys are wrong after captures occurs uh, but I'm not sure that this missing line was the problem anyhow because uh, even if I comment that out I'm not sure uh, let me clear this uh, where was my use case again had this at the ready. So there's the input which causes the problem. Pipe that to Stockfish, hit enter, we're done. Um, I added some logging that prints out where's the memory address that we're trying to index into. Probably don't have that much memory allocated for Stockfish, but that's probably also the wrong number. Um, 
So then I was just looking at what was going on in this part of the code. Um, and there was a recent change here because uh, the official Stockfish team decided to optimize some of their code. So they're now combining piece type uh, with piece color and just calling that data structure piece. And um, it's enumerated as an integer and all that fun stuff. But uh, the, that possibly had some casualty here because now maybe I'm forgetting to check like what's the type of piece that's on a square and is that a real piece or not. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it should probably be here. Um, uh, I was just trying to recall my notes as to how um, we do hash keys when captures occur in atomic chess. Uh, and I mean, one thing I tried is to say, what if we say, just what's the type of this piece? Is that going to return something informative? Because I'm at this point, I'm pretty confused as to what's going on. I know we're able to check what's the piece that's on. I should actually take a look at the definition of this um, piece on function. That didn't occur to me till now. Uh, piece on turn board at index s. Okay, and if I remember right, board is defined. Yeah, it's just an array of pieces. So I should be able to index directly into it. Shouldn't be any problem indexing into board. Um, so maybe the values that are going into blast are wrong. Because that should also be indexable. Um, we were seeing a minute ago that that's in fact an array of pieces. Um, so piece on blast square is getting assigned into piece. I mean, that all makes sense. I'm so confused. How could this get wrong values into there? Unless there's squares that are on the board that haven't been initialized, or unless after I've undone a move, something's not right. Uh, I could add some more debugging code into the thing that checks are my positions sane. That would probably be a good idea. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, first, let's get that correct. Um, where else are you doing a hash function thing here? Uh, that's a lot of hashing. I was expecting this to be simpler. Okay, where in this file are we doing things for atomic chess? And maybe some of those are hashing and some aren't. For atomic and we have no king, there are no checks. For atomic and uh, there are no kings, we have no checks. Um, in atomic chess, the end game comes twice as soon. In atomic chess, here's how you actually validate that a move is legal, I think. Uh, what else? Atomic chess. Uh, castling can change. I, what's the deal here? Oh, for not castling. Uh, here's how you validate the moves legal. I don't think there's any problems there, although I can't be entirely sure. I think that the validation code that's in place would probably catch that if there were a problem. Um... Yeah, more move validation. Um, trying to get out of check. Here's how you get out of check. 
uh, more check validation rules, the actual capturing stuff. But as we see, this is using the same piece on technique that's used for identifying the captured piece. Um, oh, but yeah, as we're capturing things, we're doing things with hash tables and hash keys. So if we had a capture, remove the piece, update the material hash key. Uh, oh, wait, wait, what am I doing here? If we're in atomic chess, Wait, when, when am I updating the key here? Right, so this is updating the key um, as it's removing the piece uh, that performed the capture, right? Attacks from king. Now this is just all the key pieces that are around the piece, or around the capture square. Um, got to think about that one. That's kind of messy. Uh, I forget. Does this? Yeah, we've removed the capture piece. Update the material hash key. What do we normally do? Like if we're not doing atomic chess. Take the piece that's on the from square and move it to the destination square. Else, okay, so this is where I was originally taking care of um, updating the hash key to deal with the fact that the capture method uh, didn't properly update it. Um, but I think this is simpler. Um, well, okay, well, I guess I could leave that be. Um, so this takes care of removing the from square piece I'm still perplexed as to why I did it this way, but yeah, no, it should realize that. There should be all kinds of warning flags going off if that is not, uh, in fact, the case. Uh, so let me go back to where we started originally. Um, I don't need that extra return function because even though this performs an XOR that assumes the piece is moving from the from square to the to square, later on that's compensated for by the fact that um, as the move is actually executed, we, well, okay, wait, yeah, no, this actually does have to be here. And because we're trying to do a speculative lookup. Yeah, so I can't just rely on the actual move function to update the hash key because we might want to do a lookup or a prefetch um, prior to that. So it's actually going to improve performance because now we're no longer generating the wrong hash keys as we try to look things up. Uh, but yeah, what that means is that we as we actually perform um, the move uh, where we were performing that move ever so gracefully. Uh, come on. I'm trying to remember where we were just a minute ago. Yeah, so after this they're saying as we perform the move, we need to um, update the hash. Wait, maybe this isn't mutually exclusive. Maybe this has to happen as well as that other thing we were doing. Yeah, 
because this performing of the move doesn't call that prefetch code at all. We're actually executing the move, and there's no prefetch happening here. So that was just an outright bug that all the prefetches would fail. That's not great. Uh, it's inefficient, but that's not the defect that I was actually looking for. Um, so, let's see, maybe I should add some debugging here as well. Yep, yep, yep. We're going to do this. Um... Grab my other debugging statement and drop it in place here. Um, and hey, look, it works. Um, but let me give this the name of the function, which is do move. Um, hang on, there's my code. Come back to my code. Do move and log that. Uh, we're going to name this other one P after. Okay, and then we're going to move. Um, this is inefficient, but. Uh, but yeah, I'm typing all that manually. I don't know if I compiled the entire program with all those flags. Oh, this should be x86-64 modern. There we go. And now we see some compilation going on. You guys get to see all the flags that are used to compile. Um, inside this shell, all of my I've got GCC compiling four threads at a time. Um, or four jobs at a time or something of that nature. I think six jobs, four threads, so it can balance them all out as it's compiling. Um, I'm going to see what output we get. Key after. So I'm confused why I don't see more output. Um, Why is this not logged? No captures are occurring in the first four moves. That's why not. Um, okay, so where does the captured piece get initialized? Um, let me search for uh, captured piece getting set to something. Okay. So apparently that never needs to get initialized. But I had assumed that my array of pieces would also also initialize um, to a whole bunch of zeros. But apparently what we're finding is that this um, array of pieces is not getting initialized to zeros. Oh, this reminds me, there's one other thing that got changed upstream, so I should actually pull that in. I mean, I should have done that before starting coding. Um, I'll stash my changes, git pull upstream. Oh, that change didn't? Okay. I thought that, um, I thought there were upstream changes. I know there's one in the works, but maybe it's still going through testing at this point. Um... So, yeah. We're finding that the piece that's in that array is not a real chess piece, because I think real chess pieces go from 0 to 12 or something. 
Well, it's not even the move, it's the fourth half-ply search, which is causing the problem, as it's attempting to do the speculative prefetch, and doing so using a value that has not been initialized. At least I think it hasn't been initialized. Um, so, it's not the fault of this function, but of the code that got executed prior to it. Um, but, it's so curious. Um, hmm, wait. If captured, yeah, what's the value of captured? Oh, I'm being a dum-dum. All right, <clears throat> so let's scroll up. Computes the new hash key after the given move. Needed for speculative prefetch, does not recognize special moves like castling, ampassant, and promotion. You know what our bug here is, guys. The bug is that the move has not been executed, and that's why Blast has not been populated with the piece that's going to be captured because of the explosion. Yeah, so captured, I mean, just to prove out the theory, I'm going to switch this for that. Um, we can see that, in fact, a capture will have occurred after four moves. Um, This is pretty spectacular, honestly. Um, so yeah, after four half moves, um, piece nine is on whatever destination square, such that piece nine is about to be captured. However, the capture's not yet occurred. The capture will occur after the move has been executed, but we have not yet executed the move. Therefore, this array blast has not been populated. <sighs> oh my goodness. Uh, previous iterations of the code, it would check what's the type of the piece that's in um, blast BSQ. In fact, I might still have this open here. So previous to some recent changes, this is what used to execute. Let's just check what type of piece is there. I think type of would have some sanity checks, and maybe it didn't, I don't know. But regardless, somehow, this would return a valid memory address. Um, but we're checking the value that's in blast BSQ, right? We have no idea. We have not executed the move yet. Um... So because we haven't executed the move, the value that's in there might not be the correct value. The conclusion that you can draw is that between missing this line of code, this here, and between trying to check the value, well that and the other fact that we're trying to check a value that hasn't been initialized yet, or might have been initialized in some previous game or some previous position or who knows what's in there. Um, between those two, that practically guarantees that um, these uh, prefetches have a very likely failure rate. Um, and unfortunately, this piece of code lacks a unit test because what we're trying to test is something fairly complex anyhow. What this basically means is that tons of these uh, prefetches that have been trying to be performed in the search have been returning the wrong hash keys and looking up and finding that there's no value um, in the transposition table. Basically, this function could have been saying, you know, if we're playing atomic, just return zero. And that might have been, that might do better than what it's currently doing. Um, we can fix this. So, I'm going to change this. Uh, yeah, I have to 
change this. We are not interested in what's in that. We're interested in what piece is about to be captured. Um, minus the p minus the square. That's the originating piece. So okay. Here's what's going on. If a capture is going to occur, look at what piece is on the square to be captured. Look at what piece is performing the capture. So both of those are going to be removed. Also look at everything else that's within the blast radius and remove those as well. However, um, this does not work for en passant. Uh, I don't think in all of my searching through previous, uh, all my previous searching through this position at CPP, I don't think I've ever seen something for en passant. Um, I'm very confused. It could be. Okay. I was gonna say, what about other things like promotions and castling and all that? Castling's not to be considered here, because castling only happens when you have a normal move. Oh, I'm sorry, castling does not capture. Um, castling is not a capturing move. I was thinking one step ahead here, where um, uh, let me get that backtrace while I'm at it. Well, in order to get the backtrace, I have to leave the erroneous code in here. Uh, let's grab this input. Grab this input. Holding down the mouse that time. Um, and run the debugger. So we can see search. Line 1632 is our context. Uh, this is not checking whether or not the move to be performed is a non-promotion and um, is a non en passant move. This is probably a defect in the official stockfish. Um, where it's suffering a performance penalty for performing prefetches incorrectly. Right? This is crazy. How is it that I'm the first person in... Well, okay. I mean, there's tons of developers on the Stockfish team. It boggles my mind that none of them discovered this. Granted, none of them were doing what I'm doing with the program, but... Um, I don't know, like, how did... How are they generating hash keys in the event of an en passant move? Um, that's just blowing my mind that they could have missed this. I can't, I don't know. Hopefully it's not affecting their tournament results, but that's crazy. Um. Yeah, there's nothing here to check what's the en passant square. And there's nothing to check, like, is this a promotion move or is this an en passant move? So this speculative